How's it going guys? My name is Mark Hernandez. I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist here in Dallas, Texas. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about acupuncture. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration here. Um, and I'm also going to explain uh, a few questions uh, and answers that people normally have, um, particularly about needles, about pain, um, and so on and so forth. All we try to do is attain balance. So we want to either um, strengthen or we want to add something in or we want to take something away. Normally uh, we either have too much of something or we have too little of something. So the idea is we want to really make sure that we balance out the system and we do that with needles. All the needles are going to be slightly different. So uh, when we talk about the differences or variations of needles, we have um, diameters of needles, lengths of needles, and uh, strengths of needles. Um, also, we have differences between gold and silver needles, but for the most part, modern needles don't use that. We usually use stainless steel. Um, as we go forward, you'll see color variations with some of these needles too, and what that denotes is what diameter that they are. Um, and then you'll see some that are specific or they're very uh, novel is what I'll say because they're used specifically for either uh, getting deep into an area in the body or for sports related or uh, athlete related injuries. Every time we do an acupuncture treatment it's going to be slightly different. Um, the needle points are going to be always different. So. When somebody comes into the office, usually the reason why they're coming in is going to be slightly different. And every time we do a treatment, things should be getting better. So we should be varying as we go. It should be changing. It should be getting either lighter or heavier, depending on what's happening that week, or that day, that month. Are there any side effects to acupuncture? Side it's, effects? Uh, what are those? Uh, like euphoria, um, being super comfortable with your life, enjoying who you are. Um, those are good side effects of acupuncture, <laughs> um, being pain free. Now, uh, to be more specific on what can happen during acupuncture, so there's no actual lingering side effect after the fact. Um, really what you want to think about is what can happen during the treatment. So uh, because we are working on the human body and the needles are so small, you can hit a very fine capillary. So you'll see um, there can be some bruising behind, there can be some, uh, some bleeding from the needles, but again that's very short-lived. Usually the wound closes itself after about 30 seconds and then um, that's that. Treatments last about an hour. Now, typically, uh, as you come into the room, we'll ask a lot of questions, we'll get a lot of information, um, and we, what we want to do with that is figure out the whole. So, we don't know what's going on, and a lot of times patients walk in with no diagnostics, so I have no idea of what, what, what to do or how to help them unless I ask a ton of questions. We call that the interrogation phase of acupuncture. It sounds very intimidating, but I'm not using any kind of CIA techniques to get information out. It's just a conversation. Um, naturally it'll progress. I'll ask a few questions and as we go um, that'll taper me off to a differential diagnosis and with that diagnosis uh, I come up with the needles and the points that we want to use for that. It doesn't hurt. The thing about acupuncture that most people get wrong is that they think about hypodermic needles, a thicker needle or a broader needle or a sharper needle. And they think about whenever they were kids and they'd gotten shots in the past. Of course, they didn't feel good, especially those booster shots. But uh, it's not that way. They're very thin. And, and again, we'll go over that here in a little bit. But uh, some of the points you may feel, now, they may not be painful. You may be, uh, feel some pressure from them. And what that means is that you needed it. Ultimately, if you're extremely stressed out, think about what that does for your central nervous system. Um, you're going to feel every little thing irritations even. If somebody talks to you the wrong way, it's going to irritate you. So imagine if you're sticking a foreign object into that sensitive system, you're going to feel it, but it's not going to be pain. It's going to be a pressure from that point. Relatively straightforward. Uh, my website, www.dallasacuclinic.com. Um, that's one of the easiest ways. My phone number, 469-867-1841. Uh, give me a call. We can set up an appointment. As you can tell, even by the interview, um, I try to keep the treatments a little more homey. I try to make them very comfortable. Um, my room is set up in a way to be more one-on-one -on -one so that I have more time with my patients and I can really uh, get to understand the case and really 
uh, fix any issues that come up. All right, so with no further ado, here are those samples that I promised you. So as you can see here, we talked about that color variation and the uh, diameter and what that means. So here you see, this is a shorter needle. Um, this is a little bit of a mid-length. So this is normally what we would see for everyday use. This is the same length, it's a thicker diameter, and it's noted, you'll see that this specific brand, they call it a G-type. These are our Japanese needles as well. So whenever we get into um, the difference in country, that has a lot to do with how these different countries treat patients. So Japanese patients don't like to feel pain at all. So these are a little bit of a finer needle. You have a bit of a finer uh, tip on them. They tend to go in a little bit smoother, and they have a very specific purpose. Um, as we go down the line here, we get into our Korean needles. These needles kind of follow the same principle as the Japanese. Um, tends to be lighter, lighter therapies, lighter treatments, um, not heavy needling essentially is what you want to do with that. But again, we have different variations in sizes. We have a very small needle here. This would be used for either the hand or the face we often use. So you'll see really small ones like that for those type of treatments. Here we have, a, again, a colored needle on the end here. That lets us know the diameter. But again, just like that Japanese, it's kind of our modern uh, day driver. Use it every day, um, stainless steel. Here's the sport variation for the Korean needle. Now, as you can tell with this one, and even this one over here, we have a spring tip. Now, what that helps with is anytime we use um, electrotherapy or whenever we hook up a uh, electrostimulation unit with these needles, we can hook it up here because it's got that little spring tip and it creates that conductivity. Here, we don't quite get that with those plastic handles. As we go down the line, we have our Chinese brand here, which is gonna be piece needles. These are really good too. Again, diameter is gonna vary with these. These are gonna be your spring tip as well. And then uh, sizes will vary with that. Now, as we go further this way, these are gonna be more our kind of niche needles. We don't use these all the time. These get used every now and again and for very specific things. As you can see, we have our sport needles here and we have, this is technically a sport needle as well, which means thicker diameter. Uh, that means it's gonna be a little bit longer too. So when you try to get through dense muscle, these will be able to pull through very easily. Whereas these uh, may be a little too flexible. So, uh, and then as we go down the line again, we have here uh, the Chinese brand. And this one is a little bit different. It's got a copper uh, spring tip on it. That doesn't make much of a difference. They just do that for style. Now, as we go into the main question, which is, does acupuncture hurt? Now, one thing I wanna show you guys real quick about this. This is the needle. Very close, very flexible, these needles. Whenever we use these, they go into the skin as such, just like that. So you see, needle goes in. If I move my hand, because it's in that muscle, it's gonna move. So normally during acupuncture, you don't wanna move around too much. It comes out never to be used again. And again, this is an example of no side effect because we didn't have any blood there. And once these needles are done, we put them in a sharps container, never to be used again. Here we have the demonstration phase. Um, again, this is my wife here, so she's gonna be my lovely patient for the day. Now typically what happens is before she would get on the table, we would actually have that interrogation phase or that interview phase. She would give me all the information and then I would have her kind of lay on the bed. That would determine whether she needs to be face up or face down for the treatment. Um, if she's having back pain, then normally she would be turned the other way. Now normally what we'll do is we'll check the pulse. We'll let us see what that tells us. In Chinese medicine, the pulse is very important. It tells us a lot about what's going on inside the body. And it helps us sometimes we forget whenever we come for a treatment, uh, one of the symptoms or one of the signs. And we can usually find that in the pulse if it wasn't talked about. So her pulse feels pretty good. It's not too bad. She's in good health as it were. At this point, it gets a little quiet and your acupuncturist might look as though they're staring off into space, but they are trying to feel something. Just like I am now. All right, so we know what we need to treat. Now we wanna swab off all these points and we do that with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and the cotton ball. So we find all the points we wanna do body. So for her, we're going to keep it a little minimum. We're going to make it a little easy. We're going to work on the immune system. No, just a bit. Right there, there, and there. We want to make sure that her central nervous system is functioning properly and 
she feels amazing after this treatment. So as you can hear, all these needles get opened from a sterile package. As we go, very slowly with this, very patiently. Any pain there? No. Told you. All right, so we go into the hands. As you see, another thing I didn't talk about with the needling is we have these little things called guide tubes. These aren't necessarily needed. These were actually developed for blind acupuncturists. You imagine that, a blind guy sticking needles in you. So if I was blind and I needed to find the point, there it is, there we are, right there. Just like that, needle goes in, just like so. That's that. How are you feeling right now? Good. Now, if you notice what I'm doing with my hands here, sometimes we use measurements to find some of these uh, locations. Helps us to keep on track. We try to keep the room nice and comfortable for the patients. We try to keep, the lighting usually is a little bit more dim than this, a little bit more cave-like, a little more comfortable, but, Obviously for the video, we need a little bit more. Still feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna ask my videographer, because he's not had acupuncture before. Is he intimidated by what he sees? No, sir. <laughs> he said no, so that's good. If I can keep him in the room and not run away from the sight of needles, then we're doing good. As you can see, these points go all over the body. And one of the questions asked before, what kind of clothes should I wear? These yoga pants are perfect because I can move them out of the way if I need to. And she's wearing a yoga top, just something nice and comfortable so I can get to all the spots I need to get to. Now, most of the time, and the beauty of acupuncture is, there's a lot of redundant points that we can use just in case we can't get to certain points. So if you come, from after a meeting and you're wearing a business suit or you're dressed like me now, don't worry too much about that. We can definitely still do treatment. There's always another point. Alrighty. So as you see, during this phase of treatment, things kind of get quiet. Normally I'll have a conversation with the patient. We'll continue to talk. Um, usually it's day-to-day -day stuff that we talk about at that point, but we try to keep the patients nice and comfortable, try to ease them through the treatment. If ever they do have an aversion to needles or they're a little scared by it, we'll keep you talking so that you feel nice and comfortable through it all. Ultimately, as the needles start to get put in, and as you see on my wife's face, the eyes begin to close, the bed begins to get softer, your body begins to get heavier as everything sinks down. Once these needles get put in, like that one is, that'll be our last one. So traditionally she would sit for about another 45 minutes. Um, it can be between 25 to 45, and again, that goes back to what we said before. If you have too much of something and we wanna reduce that, typically we don't wanna reduce too much. Um, so we'll do a smaller treatment time. So that could be about 25 minutes or so. When you wanna strengthen, usually that means you're weak, so you need more of something. So that's when you'd get into that 45 minute time length. So if you ever have a short acupuncture treatment and you think, well, I got gypped, it wasn't the full hour. It may not necessarily need to be the full hour. So it's always on what you need, just like the points. Some days you need different points because you're coming in with different pains. Uh, there may be a day that you have knee pain and it could be from uh, stumbling or trauma and there could be a day that you have that same knee pain but it's just from a chronic pain from long ago. Um, we treat them both very differently depending on the cause. The cause is always very important. Aside from that, what we would do with her now, uh, again lights would totally be turned off, there would be some ambient lighting so that it wouldn't be too dark in here. We would turn some music on so it would be nice and comfortable and then I would step out of the room let you sit for a little bit, um, again, about 25, 45 minutes. 
and then that's it. I come back in the room, we pull these all out, and then uh, that's that. So let's go ahead and show that phase too. The deneedling phase. All of these needles, as I said before, will get taken out and we'll put them in a sharps container, never to be used again. Most importantly, we count the number of needles that we put in. Why? Because we do not want you taking home souvenirs. I know people like souvenirs, but we don't want them. All right, so here's a good example. For her, she has a little spot of blood. So what we're gonna do with that, we're just gonna wipe it. And because she has good erythrocytes, it's already closed and she is all set. So that's the demo phase for acupuncture. Pretty straightforward pretty easy. Patient doesn't really have to do anything. All you got to do is lay there and enjoy. All right, so now is our second demo. This is going to be fire cupping. So uh, again, what this is going to be good for is going to be anytime somebody comes in with pain or soreness or if they've worked out too much or if we need a good detox. Now uh, it's going to work on basically the back here. We're going to just do the lower back here. We're going to do four cups today. Let's go ahead and get started. So we have our fire. That's the most important thing for fire cupping. As you see, we have to be very careful with this as I walk out of shot. I come back, here we are, fire's back again. We have our glass cups. Now it's very important with this, we have to be very fast and very careful. But that's it. Just like that. We wanna make sure we get these cups on fast and we form a seal. Then when we're done, that's it. That's all we do. Fire's out, cups are on, very tight to these cups. Now during the cupping treatment, you'll feel a little bit of a pull and what we're doing is we're creating positive and negative force on the system. So the cup itself is pushing down on the tissue, but because we created a vacuum with the fire and the lack of oxygen, it pulls the tissue up. So imagine a deep tissue massage on steroids we can really get down into the areas that we need to get into. Now, the difference between this and a deep tissue massage is because we're not moving it, we're not constantly irritating the area, we're letting that vacuum do its job. Once we finish with that, these cups pop right off just like so. You hear that little sound? And for people who are in intense pain that come in for cupping, this sound is heavenly because that means the cups come off and immediately you feel that uh, that change in that pain level. And you will have some bruising left over from cupping, so that would be a side effect for that. You may have a little bit of a welt left behind after about 30 minutes that goes down. Um, but aside from that, relatively straightforward, very old modality, um, works very well. Uh, you gotta have a skilled practitioner to know what they're doing um, and don't try it at home because we are using fire, guys. Aside from that, that's pretty much it. And again, thank you guys for uh, allowing me to speak to you. Thank you for being patient with me. I know some of my explanations can be a little long. Um, I do appreciate you guys giving me the time and I do appreciate uh, my wife being here. I appreciate my videographer here helping me out too. And uh, with that, we'll bid you adieu.